14 dispatchers determine on which thread or thread pool a started coroutine should be used for its execution. In this lecture, we will now have a look at the different predefined coroutine dispatcher implementations that exist. You will learn when you should use each of them and how we can create our own dispatcher implementations. Let's start with the dispatcher we are already pretty familiar with. And this one is the main dispatcher. The main dispatcher is only available in applications that have some form of user interface, like an Android application or a Java Swing application. So you won't find this dispatcher in backend applications, for instance. In UI applications, there is usually only one special thread, like the Android main thread that is allowed to perform operations on the user interface. So when you are using this main dispatcher, the coroutine is executed in this special thread. The main dispatcher is defined as the dispatcher for the view model scope, as most of the coroutines that are started in this scope will in some way interact with the UI. Internally, the Android main dispatcher is simply using an ordinary handler that is tied to the Android main looper. When using the main dispatcher on Android, the code blocks in our coroutines are then sent as runnables to the message queue of the Android main thread. The next dispatcher we are going to take a look at is the IO dispatcher. As the name suggests, we should use this dispatcher in coroutines that perform IO related blocking operations like reading from the network or from disk. This dispatcher internally uses a shared pool of threads, in which threads are created and shut down on demand. This thread pool is limited to 64 threads, but can be configured in a way to use even more. The next dispatcher is the default dispatcher. And this one is used by all the standard coordin builders like Launch and Async if no other dispatcher is specified in the context. This dispatcher is optimized to perform CPU intensive work outside of the main thread. Examples for CPU intensive operations are heavy calculations, sorting of a big list, or parsing a big JSON file. This dispatcher implementation is also backed by a shared pool of threads, but here the maximum number of threads is equal to the number of CPU cores on the device, but at least two. So the actual difference between the default dispatcher and the IO dispatcher is the number of threads in the underlying thread pool. As I said before, the default dispatcher uses as many threads as there are CPU cores available on the device. A modern Android device usually has either 2, 4 or 8 cores. So the amount of threads in the thread pool of the default dispatcher will most likely be either 2, 4 or 8. The I.O. dispatcher, on the other hand, uses up to 64 threads in its thread pool. It uses that many threads because when there are a lot of threads that are doing I.O. related operations, many threads are idle and just wait for a certain I.O. operation to complete. While these threads are waiting, the CPU can run other threads in the meantime. The default dispatcher, on the other hand, uses a relatively small thread pool because each thread is performing a very CPU intensive operation and therefore allocating more threads than actual CPU cores would not make the CPU bound tasks any faster. In the use case implementation of this section, we want to calculate the factorial of a big number on a background thread. As this calculation is very CPU intensive, we should use the default dispatcher. The last one of the four predefined coroutine dispatchers is 
dispatcher.unconfined. As the name says, this dispatcher is not confined to any thread. So coroutines started with this dispatcher are initially running in the thread they were started in. And they might switch threads if there is some context switch in any of the suspend functions that the coroutine is calling. The official documentation of this dispatcher says that the unconfined dispatcher shouldn't normally be used in code. And so we won't spend any more time on it. Instead of using a predefined coroutine dispatcher implementation, however, you can also create your own ones. And the coroutines library therefore provides some helper functions. You can use new single thread context to create a dispatcher that runs on a single thread. Or you could use new fixed pool context to use a dispatcher that internally uses a thread pool of a specified size. What you can also do is to create your own custom executor and use the dot as coroutine dispatcher function to convert it to a coroutine dispatcher. As you can see, threading is highly configurable when using coroutines. However, at least when developing Android applications, you will always probably just use one of the three default coroutine dispatcher implementations. So either the main dispatcher, the IO dispatcher, or the default dispatcher. So this was a free video from my online course called Mastering Kotlin Coroutines for Android Development which contains more than 9 hours of high-quality video content and is therefore probably the most extensive and in-depth resource about coroutines on Android. If you are interested, please check out the link in the description.